My camera's having a little peek. Let's have a peek at Vines. G'day everyone, Connor McDonald here. Let's talk about bind peaking. This is really an intro to get us into the next stepping stone, which is adaptive cursor sharing, which will be an upcoming video. But this one's about bind peaking. So I wanted to set the scene as to where bind peaking came from, and then we can move on to adaptive cursor sharing later on in this video series. One of the costliest things you can do in an Oracle database is to throw an SQL statement at it that it's never seen before. That's what's called parsing. We have to actually work out how to run that SQL. We've never seen it before. We have to work out, is it syntactically correct? I often spell from incorrectly. I often do F-O-R-M. It's my most common typo when I'm spelling SQL statements out. So I have to check the syntax. Then I have to check, is it actually going to possibly work? Are the table names correct? Are the column names correct? Do I have grants on those particular objects? Are those objects actually views or synonyms? Then if I've done all that stuff, I still have to work out how to best run it. And the optimizer has to come into play to look at the indexes and the distribution of the data to come up with the best way of running it. So parsing is really expensive. And as most of us are already aware, the solution to that is to use bind variables such that we can reuse a plan, reuse the, the effort that someone made in parsing for subsequent executions, bind variables help us along that journey to get better performance. The question that comes from using bind variables is, what does the optimizer do? If a bind variable is a placeholder for an as yet unknown value, how does the optimizer come up with the best plan given that it doesn't have all the information yet? In most cases, it doesn't really matter. For example, if I'm looking up an employee's details in my employee table, it doesn't really matter what employee number I pass in the likelihood is every single query will be a primary key lookup in that case. So one employee number versus another doesn't make any difference. It's always going to be a one row lookup. Where things do get interesting is if what if the value inside that bind variable has a material impact on the way the optimizer should proceed. If I had sales of Christmas gifts, then obviously coming in with the bind variable of the month of December is vastly different to a bind variable value of the month of February in terms of the number of Christmas gifts purchased in that month. December, we all go crazy and buy things for our children and family, etc. So sometimes when the data is not evenly distributed, the value inside the bind variable could be critical. In old versions of Oracle, we didn't really care what the value inside the bind variable was. We used a common plan throughout, and that's where bind peaking came into play. Here's an example showing the need to be able to peek inside a bind variable. I'm gonna start with a table called T1, and I'm gonna deliberately populate it with some skewed data. Using the case statement there, if you look carefully at the SQL, you can see we're actually putting in one row for each of the values from one to 19, and then half a million of the values just about will be the value of 20. In fact, I'll put an index on that table and gather some statistics, including putting a histogram on. Now that's not critical in terms of this demo, but what I'm trying to do is give the optimizer the absolute most information it can get just to prove that we're not hiding anything from the optimizer when it comes to using binds. Now, if I look at the histogram on that table, it's a frequency-based histogram, which is ideal. And if I look at the histogram distribution of the data, you can see that all the values from 1 through 19 only appear once in the table. That's the frequency column. The value of 20 occurs for the other vast majority of the times, so all, the, all the rows up to 500,000 rows in total. So obviously querying for a value of one, which returns me one row, and querying for a value of 20, which returns me a huge number of rows, is really quite different queries. In fact, we can actually see that the optimizer does a very good job when provided with that histogram information. I'm going to flush the shared pool to make sure there's no lingering examples floating around. And all I'm gonna do is say, let's optimize the query for the primary key equals 10. As we saw before, there's only one row for that. And when I look at the execution plan, the optimizer got it exactly right. It said, I estimated one row, and because there was only one row, I'm gonna take advantage of the index on that column. So far, so good. Let's now throw the literal value of 20 at the optimizer. This is the value that has hundreds of thousands of rows. And 
the optimizer once again, using that information in the frequency histogram, got things spot on. It said there are so many rows of the value of 20 scattered all over the table, it would be ridiculous to use an index. I'm going to use a table access full, and you can see the estimated rows matches the reality. It thought there was nearly half a million rows. Let's now flush the shared pool again and repeat the exercise, this time using a bind variable. Now, what I've done for this demo is I've turned off all the features related to bind variable peaking, such that this is the behavior that we used to see in older versions of the Oracle database. So I've got a bind variable called VO1. I'm going to set the value to 10 and run the same query we saw earlier in this video. This time, the optimizer has come up with an interesting estimate of 25,000. Now, we know that's not the one row that we're expecting, and it's not the half a million rows for the value of 20. 25,000 is a sort of general figure that the optimizer came up with when it sees a bind variable. It simply said, I'm assuming that your average bind variable is going to return 5% of the data. And we had 500,000 rows, so 5% of the data is 25,000. We did use an index, which is a good thing for this particular value of bind variable equals 10. Let's now throw our second bind variable in there. That's a value of 20. Now we saw before that ideally a table access full is probably the way to go. We run the query and now when I look at the output, here's where things are starting to get problematic. The one size fits all estimate is probably not appropriate here. We come up with an estimate once again of 25,000, which is miles off the half a million we're expecting. And as a result, we used an index range scan. That could be very expensive for the vast number of index probes we had to do, half a million almost, for the value of 20. That leads us on to the need to peak inside a bind variable to help the optimizer make a better decision. I've set the parameter here for bind peaking to be turned on. This is something you would never have to do. I had explicitly turned it off to mimic the old versions of the Oracle database. This value here is actually what the default is in all modern versions of the Oracle database. I'll flush out the shared pool to make sure we got no lingering plans floating around, and I'll redo that same demo. I'll set the bind variable to equal to 10, of which we know there is only one row, throw it at the optimizer, and now the optimizer has, due to the benefit of bind variable peaking, had a look inside that bind variable, for lack of a better term, to see what the value was and use that to optimize the query. You can see now it's, yes, it's still using an index, but more importantly, the estimated number of rows is bang on. That's bind variable peaking in a nutshell. The ability for the optimizer to, for lack of a better term, defer coming up with an execution plan until the very point of execution when a bind variable value has been supplied and I can use that value to come up with the best execution plan possible. We'll see in the next video though, some of the shortfalls of bind variable peaking as we move along toward adaptive cursor sharing. Bye for now.